Hey, you know what? Uh, Nick from Direct Hit is on the phone with us. What's up, Nick? Hey, how's it going, dudes? Pretty good, man. Rock and roll high school this weekend, man. I can't wait. It's going to be an awesome time. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm going to be at five bands this weekend. It's going to be cool as hell. <laughs> so That's awesome. I was, just telling, I was talking to Ryan before, but if it's half as, uh, half as cool as it was last year, it's going to be uh, an awesome time, believe you me. So. It's going to be twice as cool as last year. If it was <laughs> half as cool as it was Absolutely. last year, it might not be that cool. No, no, it would still be pretty fucking awesome what because is? last year was kind of amazing. All right, then. all right, I stand corrected. Picture the gusto with Misfits paint. Oh my god, that's all I got. Dreadlocks, Misfits paint, burn, baby, burn. That's all I got to say about that. Hey, Nick, uh, uh, you guys uh, just broke some news. Directed is going to Europe in May. Talk about that, man. What's that? What's that going to be like? Oh, dude, I uh, well, I've never been out of the country before, really. I've been to Cancun once before in my life, uh, and I did like the school trip thing with, uh, or when we went down to Brazil a couple of weeks ago. But um, this is really the first time that I'm going to be uh, unleashed <laughs> outside <laughs> of the country. So, dude, we're we're super psyched for it. We're going. Uh, we're spending ten days up in the UK, uh, and we're spending another couple of weeks in mainland Europe, uh, just kind of driving around. There's another band from Belgium that's coming with us, and. Uh, Man, it, it probably doesn't sound like I'm really psyched over the phone right now, but man, I'm, to say that I'm excited is sort of a gross understatement. So, um, something that we've all wanted to do for a really long time, and uh, to be able to finally do it, I guess it's, it, it, it's just pumping me out of my mind. That shit, <laughs> so that is awesome. I'm, I'm that for it. Seriously, fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's like it's weird because we've been releasing our stuff on the internet for free uh, for the last few years, and um, I mean, before it was it was really strange. Like getting a European tour was sort of like this this sort of big deal, and now it's like we go around and we tell people we're going over to Europe, and like, oh yeah, dude, I've I've done that like six times already. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's like a good time. So, but it's cool. I mean, there's there's been people that have been emailing us and um, saying how psyched they are to to see us once we're over there, and um, I, I don't know. There's there's not much else I can say about it. I've never so, been there before, so I, I don't really know what to expect. Well, what kind of oh. spurred that? Was was that purely from internet response, or was that uh, something that has been kind of like a band uh, push? Uh, well, I mean, it was kind of both. Like we've been, we had a bunch of people that that had downloaded our stuff from over in Europe that kept saying to come over and tour. Um, and I was always, I'd, I'd always send them a note back and be like, "No, man, we've got no clue how to do that. We can't drive over there. We don't know how many <laughs> people are over there." And like, I didn't want to just kind of climb on a plane and then get stranded in a foreign country where no one spoke English. So, um, but one day there was this one kid who sent us a note and was like, yeah, I know this guy. I, I sent him the same stock response and said that we wouldn't be able to make it. And he said, no, you guys totally could. I know this guy that can, uh, that can hook you up. Um, and so I was like, oh, okay, I'll email this dude and send him a note. And he was like, yep, you guys want to come over next year? I got it all hooked up. It was, it was just like that. It was super quick. Wow. So, nice. um, and I, it was, it was sweet that, um, we could kind of back it up, letting them know that there were some people that had heard us before. And, um, so yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it definitely wasn't something that we were like working for a whole year for or something like that. It just kind of came together one day and, um, kind of took us by surprise, but needless to say, we're all, we're all really, really excited for it. So we've known about it for, uh, almost, uh, like four or five months now back in August, right when the album came out was when dude sent us a note and said that he could bring us over. So, um, really excited about it for sure. Talking to uh, Nick from Direct Hit. Nick, um, you guys uh, released Dome Splitter back in August of 2011. Uh, take us through the uh, the recording process for that and how the album all came together. Sure. Um, well, we had it was like I was saying before. We had, we put out a bunch of stuff on the internet, um, and the band's been together for. Jesus, man, I think we uh, we had our first practice in 2006, um, but we've had more lineups than I, I can even count. Um, we were a three piece at first and we had a new bass player after that. We had a new drummer after that. And, um, it's just kind of rotated along, but that whole time we were recording EPs that we just kind of put up on the internet for free. Um, and so we kind of got through four or five of them and we'd been with a steady lineup for about a year at that point, And everybody was kind of saying like what kind of a bummer it was that we didn't really have a definitive kind of record or EP or something like that where the actual band <laughs> was, was on it. Um, and so what we did is we kind of went through and we sent all this stuff out to all of our friends and our mailing list and said, like, 
we don't really know what songs we want to do, but why don't you guys tell us what your favorites are, and we'll record an album out of whatever songs you like and whatever you guys want to hear. Um, and so we sent out slips of paper to all these different people, and we tallied all the votes from all the ones that got mailed back to us, and that was how we picked the songs on the album. So um, all the ones that you hear on that record actually were released before it came out, um, but they were re-recorded with this all-new lineup, and the, the, the songs themselves had changed over the course of the year before that um, because we'd all been together for long enough, and everyone had kind of put their own spin on them. Um, and so I think it was back in February of 2011 we started recording it. Um, we took probably two, three months to really make it sound awesome. Uh, and it was nice. We had we have a small label out in New York that helped us out with it a little bit, um, spread it around the Internet a lot, and that's kind of where we, uh, where we find ourselves today. So it was really cool. We had almost every day we had other people from our friends' bands in helping us out with vocals and um I mean, there's, we, we play a lot down in Madison, and there's obviously a pretty strong scene down there. And so it, I don't look at it so much as like a direct hit record as it was something that everybody kind of contributed to. Um, all of our friends kind of put their stamp on it and really made it sound a lot better than we could have just the four of us. So um, it was definitely a, a big group scene effort. <laughs> I guess you can kind of put it that way. So, yeah, But it and- sounds really good. We're really happy with the way that it turned out. And 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 that's worth going into more. Uh, one of the things that you did was uh, release uh, all those previous EPs that you had uh, on cassette tape in a really yep. awesome box, it, like yeah, hand drawn and magic markered. And I, I've got one myself. Very very, you know, happy with it. Super awesome. Uh, yeah, and we kind of did that as like a one-off kind of deal. Um, I mean, we didn't we we needed to raise money to record, um, and we felt really bad like just going and asking people for money on a Kickstarter or something like that, or trying to go to a record label and saying like we, we re-released all these before, but you should give us another few thousand dollars so we can do it all over again. Um, and so there were a lot of people that had been asking us like, are you ever going to release these as a physical version? And Um, nobody really wanted to put it out on vinyl or anything like that because everyone had already heard it. Um, and so we just kind of sent a note out to everyone and said, listen, we'll put all this stuff on cassette for you, um, and put it together in a nice box that's hand numbered and we're only going to make a hundred of them. We're not going to make any more than that. And, um, people kind of got excited about it, which was really cool. So, um, due to sort of all of the support from the people that had come to see us play at shows before we were able to raise enough money to re-record all that stuff and, um, put it together in a version that we were all sort of behind and really proud of that we were all a part of this time around. So um, I, I, I don't know. I, everything pretty much about this band, we kind of owed uh, all of our uh, our friends. There, there hasn't really been a lot that we've just kind of done on our own. We, we've had a lot of help along the way, and um, it's been great having that kind of support. It makes life a lot easier and a lot more fun for us. Well, <laughs> so, as- I don't know if it's awesome for everybody else, but it's definitely cool for me. As a so, friend and a fan, like... Uh, there, there's a certain amount of energy that's created in your live shows that uh, makes it just particularly, you know, more entertaining to be, you know, mm-hmm. at, at that show. Like, uh, there's uh, a, a You've significant... obviously been watching a different band, dude. <laughs> You've probably seen somebody else. Well, and, oh. and but but what I what I'm kind of alluding to is is the sort of party mentality bringing into into punk rock the sort of uh, influence of the Andrew WK kind of like party hard uh, uh, yeah. sort of thing that into the punk rock scene, uh, yeah. which uh, I think has yeah, I mean it, it it boosts the energy at at punk shows significantly. Well, I, I, I mean we kind of we have that mentality sort of because. I mean, I kind of stepped away from playing punk rock for a little while while I was in college just because I, I was so tired of hearing all these bands that, like, had a political stance that they wanted to tell you about or a philosophy or, or something like that. And um, I think what kind of got lost was this idea that music is supposed to be sort of entertaining and fun, and it's not necessarily always supposed to be about the message or the politics or the philosophy or something like that. Um, and so, I mean, that's why it is that we, we don't really write songs about our own lives. We kind of come up with different stories about other stuff that has nothing to do with um, the real world, even. Like, I, I don't want any of that stuff to enter into our music. Like, it, it, we just want it to be kind of um, apart from all that and just be really fun and entertaining all the time. And um, uh, Andrew WK is obviously a really big influence on our band, and I, I think he, he sort of has that same mentality, and that's the big way that he's inspired us. Um, both lyrically and the way that we sort of present ourselves live. 
Um, I mean, we don't want to come out and try to tell anybody else how to think. You're, you're sort of there at a show to forget all that shit as, as far as I'm concerned. Right, right. Um, and, and so I, I think that um, not so much anymore. I think people have kind of gotten away from that a little bit with punk rock. But um, back when we were just first starting out, I mean, everything was about politics and being positive or being straight edge or all I, I mean, oh, punk has that. Punk that history. They, yeah, and like we we just we didn't really give a shit about any of that. Like right. as far as I'm concerned, like punk rock to me has always been about being able to make your own choices and being able to do what you want to do. Um, and so being able to express that, uh, I think, sort of got lost on people for a while because they were so concerned with talking about what they thought and what they believed and what their choices were. And we didn't want to make it about us so much. We wanted to make it about. Um, the show and the people that came there and everybody there kind of as together as a group. I, I know that sounds preachy just talking about it well, that way, but... In it, other uh, words, your your political message is, regardless of your viewpoint, have fun. It is also yeah. about beer. Yeah. yeah. You're drinking <laughs> and, lots yeah, of beer. Exactly. And uh, uh, there's uh, a lot of, well, I, I guess not necessarily a lot of, but but there's your your own personal kind of uh, nerdery uh, uh, shines through a little bit in, in some of the songs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Well, that's just because I watch too many movies, dude. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> and read too many comic I, I, books. And uh, Nick yeah, from I, Nick from uh, 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 Direct Hit is with us here on the Bastard Den. Uh, big show coming up this Saturday at the at the Majest- Friday. Friday this Friday at the Majestic Theater. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Rock and Roll High School. You guys are going to do the Descendants, Nick. Why the Descendants? Yeah. Uh, because Danny and Devin picked them. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you guys know that are, the lead singer of the Descendants. Really huge Descendants fans, and um, I mean, I'm well aware of how much influence they have, they've had on just punk rock music in general. Um, and, and so I, I, I've kind of versed myself in their music a little bit better <laughs> since. Learning. And it was it was sort of the same thing with the Dead Kennedys set last year when we covered them. And I, I never really <laughs> listened to the Dead Kennedys all that hard before, and given them a good listen and. It's really awesome to go and learn these songs well enough where you actually uh, kind of get what the band is all about a little bit better than you did before. Um, definitely. So I, I'm I'm really excited for it. I'm a huge Descendants fan now. <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. Well, before. you guys know that that uh, lead singer of the Descendants, Milo, was uh, a professor at UW. Oh hell yeah! Now he's a researcher out at Dupont or something like that. It's totally crazy. So that, yeah, that, it's always that, that, that they're. Like, it's always nuts to me when I hear about uh, the dude from uh, from Bad Religion has a PhD too or something yeah. like that, right? Greg Graffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's he super, does. Uh, super awesome. So it's always cool to hear those kinds of stories when uh, when there's bands that sort of give it their all when it comes to punk rock, and then they kind of go home and they they do their own thing just like the rest of us too. So. Well, uh, about that kind of stuff. we Nick. picked a, a few songs to play off the album here, and one of them is actually uh, introed by the host of uh, the show uh, this Friday, uh, Kyle Booth of Whiskey Pig. Yep. Uh, we're going to be playing uh, uh, Snickers and Reese's. It's an awesome song. Hey, Nick, thanks for coming to the Bastard Den. Really appreciate it, man. If we want, uh, you're on Facebook. Where else can we find you, man? Uh, you can download uh, a lot of our stuff for free at directhit.bandcamp.com. Uh, and then we've got a Tumblr and a bunch of other all kinds of crazy social media nonsense online. So, but if you want to listen to our tunes, that's the best place to go. Directhit.vancamp.com. Awesome, Nick. Thanks for uh, being on the Bastard of today, man. Appreciate it. Rock and roll yeah, high school. And, and if you dude. happen to be listening to yeah. Max Inc. Radio in the UK, which, however unlikely that may be, yeah. look out oh, for it, the Direct oh, Hit happens. Invasion. It happens. <laughs>